I've always been intrigued by this Gabbar Singh dialogue. जो डर गया, समझो मर गया। and that's because ultimately it's Mr. Singh who's darafying these guys and also marafying these people. And come to think of it, this is pretty much what happened when SEBI, the Securities and Exchange Board of India, with all its right intentions, warned the public at large that a lot of froth had built up in the small and mid-cap segment. So basically daradia, and this consequently led to a 6% drop in mid-caps and an almost 10% fall in the small cap index. And this is not the first time that this is happening. The SEBI has been warning and taking action on a number of things, including the broader markets, IPOs, finfluencers, Ponzi schemes, misleading advertising, companies, investment advisors, and also film stars. While a majority of these, actually all of these are well-intentioned, the periodic warning signs around large caps and mid caps and small caps and SMEs and micro caps does create a confusion amongst us investors and we often end up wondering if it is a good time to invest in or exit a particular index or if there are any gaps in our own asset allocation strategy. Which brings me to something called the total market index, which as the name implies, is a combination of large caps, mid caps, small caps, and also micro caps. It's an extremely popular way of investing, especially in the US, and just one scheme, the Vanguard Total Stock Market Index Fund, or VTSAX holds around 3,700 stocks with over $1.3 trillion of assets under management. In fact, the VTSAX is where millions of Americans invest their money and for many of them, it's the only place they invest in. Which definitely makes me wonder if this is the solution to all our large cap versus mid cap versus small cap debates. And so in this video, I'll take you through the details of this relatively new nifty total market index. We'll definitely look at some performance data and most importantly, we'll see if this index as a standalone or a combination can improve our portfolio's risk adjusted returns. Let's begin. All right, so the Nifty 50 or the Sensex 30 is our general version of what the Indian stock market is. More technically, these indices, let's say the Nifty 50 represents the weighted average of India's 50 largest companies that are listed on the National Stock Exchange. And what it ignores are the hundreds of mid-sized, small, micro-cap companies whose individual weighting might be minuscule, but all put together, they sum up to a sizable number. So while the Nifty 50 is 100% large caps, on a more universal scale, it comes to only 64% of India's total market capitalization. Actually, it's less than 64 because large caps comprise of the Nifty 50 and the Nifty Next 50 index. So we are probably looking at a 50-14 split, which also means the Nifty 50 represents only half of the Indian stock market. And it's the same in other countries too. For example, the US has this Dow Jones Industrial Average Index that comprises of 30 prominent US listed companies that put together have a market cap of $14.4 trillion. In comparison, the US stock market's total market capitalization is currently about $50 trillion, which means the Dow 30 is just 29% of it and is therefore an inadequate representation of the entire stock market there. As a solution to this mismatch, we now have the Nifty Total Market Index, which offers a more comprehensive view of the Indian stock market as it tracks not 50, but 750 stocks covering the large cap, mid, small, even the micro cap segment via a single index while representing around 96% of India's total stock market capitalization. So essentially the Nifty Total Market Index consists of all stocks within the Nifty 500 and the Nifty Microcap 250 Index, meaning an investor ends up buying a small, a very small piece of all 750 companies. Now, much like most indices in India, this index is also calculated on a free float market cap basis, which means while the largest companies have the biggest impact on the index performance, even the smallest of companies, so companies like Cosmo First, Camelin, Fine Sciences, Zwarike Sugar, etc., which have less than 2000 crores in market cap are also a part of this index and this list anyways gets reviewed on a semi-annual basis. Another point of difference is around the sectoral split and while the Nifty 50 is very heavy on financial services and IT, the total market index is a lot more dispersed with companies from 22 different sectors and a lot of these sectors come due to the presence of mid, small and micro cap companies. 
This might not seem like a glaring difference, although I think it is. But my point is there are visible differences between the Nifty 50 and the Nifty Total Market Index. And the latter is definitely the truest representation of the Indian stock market still date. Okay, now let's look at the all important performance and understandably the presence of mid caps and small caps does play a part in upping the returns numbers. For instance, last year, the Nifty Total Market Index delivered 41%, which was largely supported by the mid cap and the small cap rally. In fact, one might argue that the 3-year, 5-year, 7, 10 and even the 15-year trailing returns are attributable to the recent rally which is why I also looked at the rolling returns and on an average there is at least a 0.5% to be won irrespective of the timeline we look at. Now an alpha of 0.5 might look small but over a 15-year period this comes to a 7% increase in corpus which is always welcome. As a matter of fact, this index as an SIP has done extremely well and a 10,000 rupee insertion every month since January of 2009. So a little over 15 years would have made us a corpus of almost 1 crore at an analyzed return of 14.4%. Of course, if you're into statistics, then on a directional basis, the Nifty total market index would always move in line with the Nifty 50 and that correlation is 0.96. But honestly, because it's a given, I for one will not look much into it. But just to keep that thread alive on a volatility basis, the total market index seems to be operating at a slightly lower standard deviation as compared to the Nifty. But this is again something I won't be too worried about because with about 30-35% of the stocks in the mid cap, small cap and even the micro cap segment, there can be long phases of underperformance and overperformance which one has to factor in his or her expectations from this index. Now while researching for this video, I came across an article on moneycontrol.com and there was this line that said this fund is neither a return maximization proposition nor a risk optimization one. And this got me thinking that if the total market index does not do this and does not do that, then why is it that this very index is the only one that has crossed a trillion dollars in EM globally? And why can't this index be the primary investing instrument for crores of Indians who are warming up to the idea of creating wealth via equities? In my view, there's maybe a lack of perspective, a lack of application on how the Nifty total market index can be used. And I'd like to discuss a few quick ideas here. The first application is a simple one and it is to substitute the Nifty 50 with the Nifty Total Market Index in your investing portfolio. The reasons for proposing this are pretty straightforward. The Total Market Index is simple to understand. It is a passively managed instrument. It's well diversified. You don't have to worry about asset allocation that much. And the returns offered by this index are a bit higher than what the Nifty 50 offers. So if you're someone who has just started your mutual fund slash index investing journey, then this index should definitely be in your consideration set. And how can one invest in it? Well, there are a couple of ways of doing it. The first approach is to go for a mutual fund scheme that tracks the Nifty total market index. And there is currently a scheme by Grow Mutual Fund that does that. And a second way of getting similar results is to go for a combination of a Nifty 500 index fund and a Nifty Microcap 250 index scheme. Now again, there is one AMC which offers this, Motila Luswal, I think. But here's the thing, we can't really do a 50-50 kind of split for these two schemes. And if you want to get this right, and let's say you have 10,000 rupees, then 9,500 has to go towards the Nifty 500 while the remaining 500 rupees is allocated to the Microcap 250. So yes, this is a bit complicated as compared to the total market index approach, but there's nothing wrong with the method per se. A second application of the Nifty total market index fund is to combine it with its non-domestic counterpart that is an international total market index. Now I know there are restrictions imposed by the RBI and the SEBI on how much can be invested abroad as an aggregate, but assuming that opportunity opportunity is available in smaller windows, one can explore a combination of the Nifty total market index and an international total market index like the US total stock market fund of fund or even the developed world indices fund of fund which is offered by some of the Indian AMCs. To test this out, I combined the Nifty total market index with the Vanguard total stock market index or VTSAX. So I did a 80-20 here, that is 80% of my corpus went domestically and 20% in the VTSAX. And over a nice long 17 year period, while I didn't find much difference in returns, and I even did a rolling return comparison. The data did show that the India international combination portfolio was a lot less volatile than investing in a standalone index like the Nifty total market index or even the Nifty 50. 
So effectively, this setup reduces our portfolio's volatility for the same level of return. And if you recall from my previous video that I did on asset allocation, this is exactly the scenario that reflects an improvement in a portfolio's risk adjusted return. All right, now that we are on the topic of portfolio building, the third and final application I want to discuss is to use the Nifty Total Market Index as a pivot around which you can create your long term wealth creation portfolio. For instance, I'm a big fan of the 211 allocation. That is 50% of my corpus is in large caps, 25% in mid caps, and the rest 25 is in small caps. Now I'm currently doing this by combining index funds, stocks, and also actively managed funds around flexi cap, mid cap, small caps, etc. as I've explained in the previous video. But let's say if you're more comfortable with a 60-20-20, then instead of using multiple schemes, one can simply opt for the Nifty Total Market Index which does that job quite adequately and also gives me a small dose of microcap companies within it. Even in my case, to replicate my 2-1-1 combination, I can opt for a Nifty 500 multi-cap 50-25-25 scheme, or I can also use the Nifty Total Market Index along with the Nifty Mid-Small Cap 400 Index. Some of these indices are yet to be introduced by AMCs, and when they do, I'm sure a lot of them will fit in perfectly around a fulcrum, which I think over time will be the Nifty Total Market Index for many of my fellow investors. So these were some applications, some combinations, which I hope gives you an idea of how the total market index can be used to make your portfolio simpler and more powerful as compared to the standard Nifty 50 setup. Of course, like all equity-based indices, the performance of the total market index is tightly linked to the Indian stock market and if our economy does poorly for some reason, then this index will lose some of its value. So to put this together, a total market index fund is a good option for investors who are looking for a low-cost investing vehicle. They are looking for diversification across stocks and sectors. You want a simple to understand instrument, a passively managed methodology, and something that is still date the truest representation of the Indian stock market. I sincerely hope this presentation has helped you add another perspective and it's another option in your investing toolkit that you can consider in your wealth creation journey. Once again, thank you for your time. Do subscribe to my newsletter, subscribe to this channel, do share this video with others and I'll see you next week. Until then.